A decade after the Kiwani nuclear power plant was shut down, there is some new life coming to the property. Energy Solutions is currently working on decommissioning the nearly 900-acre site. Fox 11's Emily Matesic has a closer look at the process and what it could be next there for the lakeshore land. For more than a year, Energy Solutions has had a team working on decommissioning the former Kiwani nuclear power plant property. The demolition is being done in four phases. Phase one, which included demolition of five buildings on site, was completed at the end of 2023. Work is now being done to prep for phase two, when more structures surrounding the domed containment building will be coming down. Phase three is where we get into the more radiologically impacted buildings, containment, aux building, fuel handling building, and then phase four is at the end, you kind of pull everything together. Each week, according to the project director, containers of contaminated debris are taken from the Kiwani County property to disposal sites across the country. The goal of the decommissioning is to restore the lakefront property to its more natural state. It's a carefully planned process that is expected to take another seven to eight years to complete, decades ahead of the regulatory schedule set forth by the government for projects like this. For us, yeah, we, there, we have 60 years to complete it, um, but the risks associated with leaving a plant in this condition and you know we have the ability we have the technology to do it we have the experience we've we've uh, undertaken other decommissioning projects so um, we'll clean the plant up and try to restore the environment while energy solutions is leaving the decommissioning it is partnering with a lot of local businesses and organizations to complete the project that includes Lakeshore Technical College, where Energy Solutions has created a training program in order to hire regional employees. Give them a, a basic knowledge, uh, and, and we've hired them for this project. Uh, get, that will give them experience in decommissioning, experience in, in the nuclear industry, so they can stay here and work for the eight years or so of the project. Then they have a skill set to take either to other nuclear facilities or other decommissioning projects. Well, the decommissioning and cleanup of this property could be completed by the middle of 2031. There really is no timetable for any redevelopment of this lakefront property. We do have to get through the license termination process for the NRC to, to determine what, we, what the end use will be. Uh, the other limitation we have in redevelopment is the ISFACI, so where the spent fuel is stored. It will be up to the federal government to remove that spent fuel before true redevelopment of the site can even be discussed. In Kiwani County, Emily Matesic, Fox 11 News. For more aerial and time-lapse video of the decommissioning process, check out Emily's story on our website. Okay, so uh, Kiwani decommissioning project. So. Uh, we started uh, Energy Solutions, Kiwani Solutions, started this planning of this project about a year and a half ago. We started with the regulatory requirements, uh, permitting, so we worked with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Department of Natural Resources, Wisconsin State uh, Regulatory Agencies. Uh, began with planning of the project, so you start decommissioning, uh, what do you want to do, how are you going to do it, uh, we also started with characterizing uh, the, the, the plant itself, all the hazards, whether they're radiological, uh, hazardous material in nature. So we spent a good deal of time, probably a year, on, on characterizing, which is ongoing, putting our, our uh, demolition strategy in place. Uh, and, and we started actually laying out a sequence of decommissioning. We broke the project up into four phases. And as you see, phase one, some of the outer kind of administrative buildings, phase two, turbine building, uh, gatehouse, nine stall garage, so those areas in blue. Phase three is where we get into the more radiologically impacted buildings, containment, aux building, fuel handling building. And then phase four is at the end, you kind of pull everything together. Um, so once you start the decommissioning project, which we actually commenced decommissioning February of last year on phase one, we completed the phase one demolition December of 2023, and we are making preparations for phase two, which will start later this year and go probably 15 to 18 months uh, in duration. In parallel with phase two, we start on the interior of the radiological building. So we're uh, 
looking at systems, the condition of the systems like ventilation or any, any support systems we need, we'll upgrade those and do plant modifications. Uh, we'll remove uh, major hazards in there if we see uh, you know, any asbestos or, or material that has to get removed, any radiological issues, source term that could, could cause problems for us, we either remove or reduce the source term. Uh, so that'll happen in parallel with the, the, so the blue buildings and the interior buildings in phase three will occur. Um, the life of the project, we'll, we'll finish all of the phase one through four Right now, mid-2031, the decommissioning of, of the power block area will be complete. We'll be able to collapse the license footprint down. Really what will remain is the ISPACY, uh, where our, our spent fuel is stored. Uh, the switch yard will remain, and we'll have site access roads because we're still maintaining the ISPACY. So the decommissioning project, again, about eight years for Kiwani, and uh, we'll be left with just those structures really at, at the end. Um, prior to getting to that point, we do lots of uh, surveys, final status survey, which is demonstrating to the NRC that Nuclear Regulatory Commission that we've removed all licensed material. Uh, we go through an approval process with the NRC, uh, with state agencies to say that we've removed all, all risks to the public with respect to the footprint we're trying to terminate the license on. And until they approve it, as far as future redevelopment of the land, we have to work with the NRC, uh, get final approval of that license termination, and then assess the impacts of redevelopment um, with the ISFC, what what remains and what we can do with the land. So in a very general uh, summary, that's that's really our decommissioning project. So, gotcha. so <laughs> layman's terms, like, but it's still very like, I mean, a lot of steps and processes still it, to go. Yeah, it, it is. It's, uh, you know, a lot of communication. So we communicate with our agencies. We have to communicate internal on a project, uh, just identifying what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, and, and you want to look, you know, out ahead of the activities you're doing today, probably started planning, you know, two years earlier. So you're looking far ahead in the project. Um, good planning really minimizes any complexities, generally speaking, or, or risks and hazards. So definitely don't want to jump into doing a, anything with respect to decommissioning without laying out a good plan. So that's what we're attempting to do here. You want to go outside and I'll ask you some sure. more questions? All right, so decommissioning of the Kiwani project. We've been here, Energy Solutions has been here for a couple years now. We started off uh, planning, engineering, our long-term procurement, all our regulatory actions that we have to take, uh, and a uh, lot of upfront, you know, stuff you don't, not a lot of physical changes. Uh, we did start our physical demolition uh, early last year, 2023, and we, we commenced the phase one decommissioning, and, and you can see where there are no buildings any longer. That Those were a few of the buildings that were in phase one. We completed phase one demolition December of last year. Now we're making preparations for our phase two buildings, uh, which down at the end of the plant there, the turbine building, the admin building, the other buildings are on the other side of the plant. Uh, those will start in 2024, go for 15 to 18 months. Uh, in parallel with that, the AUX building, fuel handling building, and containment building, we are uh, doing work in those areas, some, some planning, uh, doing characterization, understanding what the hazards are. We also do building modifications. So the structure you see there, that's a ventilation system we're installing. And that essentially just controls the, in, the atmospheric condition inside the buildings when we, we start to work. Uh, that, that work, phase two buildings, again, 15 to 18 months. Uh, phase three buildings will continue on 2025 till probably 27, 28 time frame. Uh, we'll end up being left with uh, really nothing but the ISFACY and the switchyard, all these buildings, everything you see here will be gone. 
We'll do site grading, restoration, uh, plant vegetation to control runoff and complete the partial site release mid 2031. So that's kind of the outlook or high level summary of the project itself. So. I know, you know, the, when we have been doing these stories for years and it was, you know, originally, you know, a 50, do you need me to move the deal? No, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, but this was going to be like a, you know, 60 to 70 year process. And you guys are coming in and doing it in like 10 years. Why, why that difference or, you know, what's. So the 60 year process that you're, that you're referring to, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission requires the plant to complete decommissioning within 60 years. Doesn't necessarily mean it takes that long. A lot of the plants that have shut down have gone into what's called safe store. And for a couple of reasons, they allow the uh, decay of the radio, radiological constituents of the plant. So as time goes on, uh, those hazards decay away. Uh, they also allowed uh, time for technology to advance. So uh, decontamination techniques, packaging techniques. So uh, plants will, will sit in state, safe store for a period of time until they can, they can lay out that strategy. So for us, yeah, we, there, we have 60 years to complete it. Um, but the risks associated with leaving a plant in this condition and, you know, we have the ability, we have the technology to do it. We have the experience. We've, we've uh, undertaken other decommissioning projects. So um, we'll clean the plant up and try to restore the environment. Yeah, I, how difficult is doing that? I mean, if we're talking about <laughs> nuclear waste, right? I mean, it's that, that scary word. <laughs> it, not, I, I wouldn't characterize it as difficult. It requires planning processes and, um, you know, just a, a lot of communication with federal and state agencies, communication internal to our project. Uh, we, we bring subject matter experts in to look at it. So uh, I wouldn't call it complicated. It just put a good plan together and execute the plan and uh, you can be successful. Don't, don't let schedule drive you, you know, don't think, don't do things that are unsafe. Uh, you, you work safely, you work to a good schedule that you lay out and we can be successful and won't be complicated. When, you know, you don't, you know, don't let schedule dictate, but I guess, how are things going? Is, you know, do you well, run into hiccups? Do you, or is, you know, is it? De decommissioning, uh, I, I characterize to people that have never done de decommissioning, you have to be uh, comfortable with change. You, you lay out a good plan and, and you, you always have to tweak the plan. Uh, we, our phase one decommissioning, end of 2022, we had a, a target finish date for phase one and we actually finished on the day we planned. So we were very predictable in, in our schedule. So uh, in, in fact, you know, we've advanced the, the schedule a bit, pulled it to the left, done some things earlier. Uh, so it's going well thus far. More challenges to come, but uh, again, with, with a good plan and delivered actions, you, you, you tend to avoid uh, surprises. So it's going well, though. Is phase one sort of the least complicated? I'm assuming as you kind of move forward with the project, things get a little more complicated and more... Um, more regulations and stuff because you're dealing with more of this material. Is that? I, I wouldn't I, say I wouldn't say the regulations change. It does. We we do try to start on the outside and work our way in. The outside being uh, lower risk uh, per se. Um, what that does for you, uh, a couple things. So our selection of phase one, we need the footprint to support other modifications for future activities, but. If you start on the outside, the lower risk, and work to the more complicated stuff, you can build your team because uh, not everybody, you know, the entire team doesn't move from one project to the other. So you, you bring in people that haven't done decommissioning. You give them uh, some opportunity to work in the decommissioning scenario. So it it uh, it does get more complicated as as you progress, but but nothing uh, too unbearable. I think the initial reports when we reported a couple of years ago is that you'd be hiring like up to 200 people locally. Is that still yeah. happening? Or, and I, we talked kind of inside about you having to train some people and that sort of thing. So 
Yeah, so our goal is to try to not only hire, hire local resources, but also use local companies, uh, maximize that uh, as much as we can. It's not always possible, uh, but we are hiring local people, hiring local companies. Uh, one example of what we've done locally, one of the local colleges here, we've, uh, we've created a training program for RP technicians, so we run them through give them a, a basic knowledge, uh, and, and we've hired them for this project. Uh, get, that will give them experience in decommissioning, experience in, in the nuclear industry, so they can stay here and work for the eight years or so of the project. Then they have a skill set to take either to other nuclear facilities or other decommissioning projects. But yeah, we have, we have hired, uh, you know, our, our, we're still sitting somewhere between 200 and 300 employees. We'll, we'll have some spikes so over time, depending on what we're, we'll do, but that is still the plan. Yeah. So. You know, you know, by 20, mid-2031, you know, you hope this will be sort of, not back to its original, but, you know, the ability to potentially redevelop. I know there aren't plans, but there is hope, I guess, that something could be developed here not yeah. related to energy. <laughs> Potentially, uh, you know, I, I know you know, I know you don't know what, but I guess the goal is to take this down, kind of restore the property, and maybe potentially develop Pot it. Potentially, yes. Yeah. So there's just over 900 acres under our license footprint. Several hundred of those acres we're actually leasing to the local farmers, so they're they're using part of the that that land. Uh, we do have to get through the license termination process w for the NRC to. To determine what we what the end use will be, uh, the other limitation we have in redevelopment is the ISPACY, so where the spent fuel is stored, um, until the federal government takes the fuel, removes the fuel, and we can decommission the ISPACY itself. That will really determine what redevelopment looks like. But uh, so it's undetermined at this time. We certainly have uh, plans to to use the, the the land for you know something useful local and but but our primary goal is focus on decommissioning focus on that project get the footprint where the plant sits now back to some more natural condition than it is in today so, so that grid that will always stay the, the switch yard yeah, the switch yard right now there there's no plan that switch yard is 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 part of the uh the infrastructure for uh you know the electrical grid so here that's so still in use, I guess. That, it, that, it is still, still in use and there's no plan for us to decommission it as part of our scope so okay. anything else you think is important that I missed I mean, this is, I mean, it's fascinating I mean, this was here for how many years and slowly it's coming down so yeah it's, yeah it's it's unfortunate that we're shutting down uh, nuclear facilities um, but it's also important that we we deal with them in in a uh, a safe manner and, we, and we, we remove the structures, remove any kind of risks that are associated with them, but it is definitely unfortunate we're shutting them down. So i uh, like to see more started up and, and uh, keep operating. So, But so. if people, I mean, the view, it's kind of, you hate to say it's a wasted view with a. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a nice piece of property.